12 barrels. Empower, yes, empower, empower. We just keep, we just keep losing them. Amen. Huh? All right, huh? All right, y'all make your way back there and while Kayla gets some lights for us. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, hon. Appreciate that. Do a good job back there. Man, all right, come on around. Let's get started tonight. One of the reasons I'm using this instead of the lapel mic tonight is because we want to Make sure you uh, get to get to be heard tonight because I'll need some I'll need some help with this. How's everybody doing tonight? Man, awesome, awesome. Y'all come out on a good cold Wednesday night. God is good, is he not? Aren't you glad you got a good warm church to come to? There are people that are meeting in uh, underground churches all over the world as we speak tonight. And uh, here we can come to a nice building and how the facilities that we have and the blessings that we experience here in the United States of America. I'm telling you, it's great to be born. Somebody said it was, it was what, how's that go? It's, um, it's, we're blessed to be Americans and it's the grace of God and be Alabamians or something like, or something like that. I can't remember. It's one of those good born sayings. Alabamians by the grace of God. Born Alabamians by the grace of God, yeah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Mark's second chapter. And I just want to kind of look at this today, and I really hadn't really got an outline. That's why, uh, like I said, I'm, I'll need your help. I'll, I'll need your input tonight and see what you think about this. Um, this, is a, this is an awesome, awesome uh, story of uh, Jesus in his early ministry. As a matter of fact, the Gospel of Mark is probably, uh, by most theologians, they, be, they believe it was the first gospel. It's the first gospel that was written. Even though it, you know, you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they actually believe Mark was written uh, as is the earliest uh, or the of the gospels. So we're going to get into uh, chapter two of Mark. Let's begin in verse one. And again, he entered into Capernaum, and after some days, it was noised that he was in the house, and straightway. Many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which basically is a, basically par a paralytic. It's what we would call that today. Which was born by four. Four people were carrying him. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press... They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let him down in the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemes? Who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is, is, is it or is it easier to say this to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he, rose, he, he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Wow, what a story <laughs> out of the New Testament. Now, I just want to, I'm, I'm serious when I say I want to get some comments from y'all tonight. Now, now, as I was looking over this today at several different times, the first thing that just kind of pops out at you when you start reading this story is, 
that uh, it says, as he came into Capernaum, I love the way it puts it into King James, it was noised that he was in the house. <laughs> How many of y'all know that if you really got Jesus, you can't hide it? <laughs> If you're really born again, do you know you that that's something you can't keep in a closet. That's something that's going to come out. <laughs> uh, you can always tell them spirit-filled Christians because you get around them just a long, just a little while, and that Holy Ghost will get off of them and get on you. You know what I mean? Somebody needs to know that Jesus is in the house. Now, freedom. Do you want to grow as a church? Then the best thing to to let it be known is that Jesus is in this house. We worship Him. He is our Savior, our Lord. We magnify Him in this church. We preach a pure gospel right out of the Word of God. We believe in divine healings. We believe in signs and wonders and miracles. We believe all the gifts of the Spirit are alive and well. And we believe Jesus is coming again. We believe Jesus will save anybody that calls upon Him out of a pure heart that God will, will, will come at that very moment and write their name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We need to let folks know Jesus is in the house. Amen? So how do y'all feel about that? Do, do, do y'all see how that is? You see how that just jumps out? And it says, And straightway many were gathered together in, 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 in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached. What did he preach to them? A social message? What did he preach to them? What did he preach to them? Y'all need to, no, he preached the word. He preached the word of God to them. And we need to keep, we need to hold on to this. This is the mighty word of God. Now, talking about there was no room. Uh, I've, now, you talking about country. Whew, Lord, have mercy. I, I thought, I, th <laughs> I thought I was country. But you know Gary Peoples? You ever met Gary Peoples? Yeah. <laughs> well, this sucker's from Hartsville. Now, you know, they on, they on the other side of that river over there. You know, man, I'm telling you what. He, he tells some stories about growing up that you just would not believe, man. <laughs> it, it was, I'm, I'm talking about country. And he said one time, they was preaching. He said, man, they was preaching up a storm. And he said, people was just all in that church, just gathered up in that church everywhere. And he said, it was so hot in there, you couldn't eat. No, it was no air conditioner or anything like that, you know. It was a little small shotgun church, and they had it packed out. Boy, that preacher was preaching up a storm, and all of a sudden, here come a big cow and stuck his head through the wind. <laughs> and uh, he'd been out there grazing. I guess he heard that good Holy Ghost preaching, and he'd come on over, and, and of course, the church, just, the church just fell out, you know. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome if there's no room? Somebody says, you know, what, what, you, what's the best problem that you can have in church? That's the best one I can think of. You remember when we were down at Maple Grove? Do you remember how we used to have to get chairs and just put them out? You talking about a fire trap? You talk, oh my goodness, man. We would have church. You, I mean, when you walk down, if you walk the aisle, you walk the aisle this way. If you come to get saved, you come to get saved this way. I'm serious. We had them packed out everywhere, everywhere. Every chair we could get in that place. And finally, when that wasn't enough, we, we uh, the, the Southern Baptists give, uh, gave us a trailer and we put people over their trailer. And then when that wasn't enough, they built a, a nice nice uh, building, which is known as the Grove today. And so uh, God bless. And that would be one of the best things. I hope, I hope and pray that people come up very soon and say, Brother Philip, we got to do something. We're running out of room. That's good news, is it not? But when you preach the word, guess what? People will come. And it said, and they come and they brought one that was sick of the palsy, born of four. Isn't that something that these four people, and I don't know who, the, the Bible really doesn't mention what their names were or who this man was that, that they were bringing. I don't know if they were kin folks. It, it, it doesn't say. It doesn't get into that. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times we need to be carried. Sometimes we need to be carried. Sometimes we need people to undergird us and carry us just a little bit. You see what I'm saying? When you get bad doctor's reports, I need somebody to carry me. Amen? <laughs> is it okay to be selfish every once in a while? Is it, okay to, is it okay to cry? Is it okay to be a little bit scared? 
Well, you know what you need? You need your brothers and sisters to carry you during those times. You need them to carry you to the throne room of God in prayer and show their love for you. I'm telling you what, man, that is a, this is a beautiful, beautiful picture of the love of God and the real church at work. When these four men came and carried this person, and notice what it said. And it said they uncovered the, the roof. And this is very important that you understand this. And when they had broken it up, I said I was going to let y'all talk, and I've been doing all the talking. Anybody got any comments on anything? We, well, let's go back. We, let me just get through what I'm going to say. Y'all be thinking about the questions or comments you're going to make on this. But listen to, listen to what it said. It said, so you need to know a little bit about the... Um, about the customs and the architect of that day. I've actually seen a building that was literally in uh, Nazareth at the very time of the birth of Christ. They've uncovered some of those. Archaeologists have uncovered some of these buildings. Now, when, we've, when, when we're in children's church or something like that, or the way we probably got in our mind, is these four guys went up on top of a roof and they just kind of pulled back some sticks and brushes and like a thatch roof and let them down. That's not what happened. That's not that at all. It's not that at all. As a matter of fact, the roofs in, in Jerusalem in those days, most of them had a stairwell that went up the side of the building. They were real, they, they, you know, they didn't have uh, separate, a lot of separate rooms and all that. Most of it was big, one big open room. And then they had a stairwell that went up the side of their roof. And uh, they would be on that roof, and that's, that's where they went in the cool of the day. You remember the story about Peter. They were, fix, they, they, they were fixing supper or preparing a meal for him. And while he, they were preparing a meal for him, it says he was up on the roof. What was he doing up on the roof of the house? Well, that was, that was where they went up in the cool of the day. You know, to get out of the heat and, and to enjoy a breeze that was coming. And let me share this with you. They didn't just move uh, some two-by-fours over and, and, and move a little thatch roof around and let that guy down. No, they had to break it up. It's like chiseling concrete. This archaeologist I saw, he said, look how thick this roof is. And, you know, it was still there. It was, it was that thick. I mean, it was just like a big, huge concrete slab. And that, it had to be to hold people up because people walked on it. And, and uh, you know, even though it wasn't uh, steel reinforced like we have today, it was a solid structure. So to break that roof up, this is what I'm saying, was not just something that, that, uh, that they did lightly. It took some effort. And sometimes when we want to see God work a miracle, it takes a little effort. <laughs> Everything don't come easy. Sometimes it takes a little effort to see God's hand move. But watch this. In verse 5 it said, When Jesus saw their faith. Saw their faith. You know what I think the world is really looking for today? Is they're looking for a faith that's tangible, something that they, that's real to them. I think there's a young generation out here today that's looking at some of us baby boomers, and they're just saying, I, wanna, I don't want to hear you talking about it. I'm tired of hearing all of that. I've heard that all my life. I want to see it. I want to see you praise God in a storm. Amen? I want to see your faith. I want to see you break up those things that's keeping other people from Jesus. I want to see that love that makes four men carry one all the way up those steps and, and sit there and probably had to take some kind of digging tool and break up that hard surface. And when Jesus saw that, he saw faith in action. Faith is not, not a verb. Faith is a, I mean, a, a, a noun. It's a verb. It's an action word. Faith has to be an action. It's not something we just say. And then Jesus said, this is, this is awesome. Thy sin, thy sins be forgiven thee. And that's the sweetest words that we can ever hear from Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. I can remember the day that God forgave me my sins. Can you remember that day? 
Do you know a time when you asked Jesus, when Jesus saw your faith in action, when you turned with a repentive heart and said yes to Christ, and He spoke back to you and said, your sins be forgiven? Let me tell you something. That's the sweetest moment that you'll ever live on this side of heaven. He said, thy sins be forgiven. But they reasoned in their heart and they said, who can forgive sins but God only? Well, guess what? He was God. He was the God man. He had perfect right. He had all the right in the world to forgive their sins. But here's, here's the good part of this story. Which is easier? To say, take up thy bed and walk, or thy sins be forgiven. Which one of those is the easiest? To Jesus, it was the same. Absolutely the same. But Jesus said, so that you know that I have power to forgive sin, let me show you a miracle. Amen. People wonder why we always talk about signs and wonders and miracles. I'll tell you why. Because signs and wonders and miracles opens the door for salvation. Read the Bible. Read the, 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 the stories in the book of Acts. Read those stories where they went in and, and crippled people got up and walked and, 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 and blind people received their sights. And then what followed? What followed after that? The preaching of the gospel. How did this stuff come? It came by a mighty rushing wind of the Holy Ghost that came down on Pentecost. And it was noised about. You can't hide something like that. You can't hide the Holy Spirit. Brother, he's too big to put in a box. And when he fell there at Pentecost, let me tell you something, people heard it. People were stirred. People came to say, what's going on? Man, I want to see them in that parking lot out there. I want to see them in that parking lot over yonder. I want them to see them so many that we can't get them in here. And I believe we're in that day, Dale. I believe there's a great harvest to be had. I do believe that. I truly believe it. What's going to bring it about, Brother Philip? I'll tell you what's going to bring it about. Four men carrying another man in love. I'll tell you what's going, what's going to bring it about. People putting their hands to the plow and being willing to break it up and do whatever it takes to get to Jesus. That's what's going to bring that revival. I'll tell you what's going to bring the revival is when Jesus looks up and says, that's faith, amen. I'm going to bless that church. Them folks has got some faith down there at Freedom. And you're going to see signs and wonders and miracles. Which was the hardest, to forgive our sins or to tell that man to get up and walk? Well, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, they both the same for Jesus. A miracle is no more. And here's the, here's the strange thing about this. And this is something that Wigglesworth, and I don't know if y'all know who that is or not, but Wigglesworth was a great, great evangelist, great faith healer, and uh, a man that saw things and did things that most of us just, it wouldn't even enter our mind to even try it. Great man of faith. 26 people he raised from the dead in his life. 26. Think about that. Wigglesworth was a wild man, but here's what he says. The same blood. <laughs> but you said it too, sister. You said it the other day. That was so profound. You just don't know how profound that was. This, we, we trust in a gospel. It's 21 centuries old. I've never seen Jesus. I wasn't there. I, I, I wasn't there when he rose from the dead. And yet I have put my eternal hope. I've put my whole life. I've put 30-something years into a Savior that I never met. My daddy never met him personally. He never saw him physically with his eyes. But yet, but yet we base our whole life, our whole eternity on the truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, we can put that kind of faith <laughs> in, in the gospel message, and yet we don't have enough faith to believe God can heal cancer, that God can raise the dead, <laughs> that God can cast out demons, that God can 
bring a revival here to freedom. We don't believe that. And yet we're trusting something that was told 2,000 years ago. Let me tell you something. It was the same blood, the same blood, the same blood that fell at Calvary. It's the same blood that works miracles. It's the same blood that changes lives today. Amen. It's the same blood. It's by His stripes we are healed. You say, well, why are you getting off on all these healing uh, passages for? I could use one right now. Amen. Amen. Let me be a little selfish, okay? Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. And it's a finished work of the cross. Let me tell y'all something, folks. I was, I was born and raised a Baptist. And, and I wasn't born and raised just any kind of Baptist. I can remember a church. It was called uh, West Highland Baptist Church. Still here in Athens. That thing started out as a little tent revival. That's how it actually got started. They called a little preacher from down in Louisiana, Dale, and he, uh, he left a, a fortune. His, 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 they had horses and big ranch, and I mean wealthy people. But he was a little preacher boy that came up here to Athens. And man, they, <laughs> they, didn't, have enough money. they didn't have enough money to put in a, a candy sack. You know what I'm saying? But he came by faith and preached and had a great ministry there at that church. And let me tell you something about Baptist, the real Baptist. They believed in that cross. They preached the blood of Jesus. Now, they were wrong on some of their doctrines. I've gone back and looked at them, and some of the things they believed, they wasn't right. You know, well, they thought they was. They was preaching it, so, I mean, they believed it to be true, so I guess they was right. I've looked at some of the things they said, and I said, eh, that's not exactly the way it is. But let me tell you something they had right. That was the cross of Jesus Christ. Go back and study the Methodists. Go back and study them. You know... You know what the difference in a spirit-filled Baptist and a, and a spirit-filled Methodist is? You really want to know the difference? One of them is just dry-cleaned, and the other one's put near drowned. Amen? We drowned ours, amen? We drowned. <laughs> That's really the only difference. Go back and study the Wesleys. Go back and study these folks. They preached the blood of Jesus. Folks, I want to tell you something. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Christ. Mm. Mm. Yes. I said they were known back in the day for the shouting Methodist and the shouting Baptist for a reason, but they got away. They changed gears. They wanted to fit a certain physique, a certain avenue. I mean, and for us to believe it, when we speak it, we have to believe it, what we're speaking. We can stand on the promises or we can sit on the premises. Amen. Good one. That's exactly true. And, uh, you know, um, that's why people say, you know, they come along and say, and see these old spirit-filled boys, they, they, and, and not all babies, because there's, there's, there, there's some out there today preaching, the, I mean, they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, trust me. But I'm saying, I can remember where there was no such thing as a church where the cross of Jesus Christ was not preached. If you, if you walked into a, a church, you was going to hear that gospel message. And we had that right. And somehow, organizations administrations, associations, educations, and all those things begin to slowly creep in and choke out the mighty power of God. And our eyes were off the cross and got back on men. Who's your pastor? What degree does he have? Well, how, what kind of orator is he? What, you know, what group of people, peoples are we trying to reach in this community? And we need to start this ministry and that ministry. And the next thing you know, the cross 
lost its place. Did you, you raise your hand, Michael? Oh, okay. Anybody else? Yes, you know, you're talking about the, the old shouting, they called them shouting Methodists, and they called them, believe it or not, trembling Baptist. Trembling Baptist. You know why they trembled? Because they were under the power of the Holy Ghost. They trembled. Their bodies would tremble and under the power. Oh, God. Yeah? They actually got afraid of the Pentecostal movement. Yeah. They, they didn't want to be associated with the Pentecostals. They were so afraid of being associated with Pentecostals that anything that, that, to do with the Holy Spirit, they didn't even want to talk about. Yeah. And so when they get to certain places in the Bible, they just skip over it or talk it away or whatever. And, you know, so this is what God says, and we know he says it. I'll, I'll remove my spirit. I'll remove my spirit. I remember, you know, <clears throat> uh, when Jimmy Swaggart said a long time ago, and I, I tell you what, I didn't have a lot of respect for Jimmy Swaggart at times because the Holy Spirit told me, you know. Now, that's true, isn't it? He'll yeah. tell you. I mean, when all that before it ever came out, I, I would tell Philip all the time, something's not right with him. But he said that the Lord was removing his spirit. And I mean, God won't completely remove his spirit, but from the, the Baptist churches. And I, I truly believe that. I won't say all of them, you know, we're not saying all together. But I'm just saying in general, you know, <clears throat> if you... And, and how many of y'all know this? You've been in visit churches. You, you're not going to raise your hand and praise the Lord. You're not going to shout and praise God. Because if you do, everybody's going to look at you. What, what are you doing? They don't understand. You know, and I'm not saying that some of that stuff can't be manufactured and, you know, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, I don't care where I am. I love Jesus. I'm just going to praise him. And, you know, that, that's real hard for a lot of churches nowadays. Exactly right. And, and, baby, I'm glad you brought that up because that brings up another point right here. I want, I want to talk about just a minute. There's a, there's a great thing, and y'all hear me use this word all the time, theology, the study of God, or doctrine. You hear me use them terms a lot. And, and, and this, this is so important that we understand this. Sometimes we're so afraid of something that it, it don't meet in our little theological box, that we shut it off. And we actually do ourselves danger. You see, the reason the Baptists did this, and I'll tell you why, is because you had people running around the church acting like a chicken, screaming and hollering and rolling in the floors and stuff like that. And so these boys would go off down to the seminary and the guys would say, hey guys, listen, you know, a lot, there's too much flesh involved in this. So instead of saying, oh, well, the Holy Spirit is real, the baptism of the Holy Spirit's real, and signs and wonders is, and, you know, God moving in us, then they actually went too far the other way. A lot of times, listen, here's what you'll find. You will hear two people arguing, arguing a theological, you'll hear them arguing a theological concept. And one of them will go this way and one of them will go that way. And you say, well, I know I'm right. No, you ain't right. I'm right. Well, guess what? Both of them's right. Both of them's right. Let me tell you what you do. You go down to, to uh, Midwestern or whatever it's called. Middle, middle something. Well, it says seminary. Anyway, you go down there and talk about predestination. Let me tell you something, brother. You want to hear about predestination? They are full blood, bloody Calvinists. And brother, let me tell you, they can tell you everything there is to know about predestination. And by the, by the time they get done with you, you'll be saying, hey, man, <laughs> they'll have you convinced. But then you turn around, you go down to another seminary, and they're talking about the free will of man and whosoever will may come and so, what, and so forth and so on. And then you actually open your Bible and say, I'm not listening to him, I'm not listening to this guy. What are you saying, Jesus? And guess what? They're both right. They're both right. And we can become fanatics either way. And you're exactly right. A lot of them were afraid of that movement, Azuzu Street movement, because a lot of people, and let me tell you, tongues can be faked. But remember this, anything that there's a fake in, there's the real thing. Amen? You see what I'm saying? Signs and wonders can be faked. Yeah, they can. They can definitely been faked. And there's been a bunch of them that's made a me, millions of dollars doing it. You know, but that means there's the real thing. Because you need to remember Satan's always the counterfeiter of the real thing. 
And so well, let's be careful. You know, I, I just use the uh, Baptist. The reason I use them for an example is because that's, that's how I was born and raised. I know more about them than I do anybody. But let me tell you something. The, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Christ should be the center focus of every church, every denomination. And I believe God is taking a generation back to that cross. I really do, Billy. I really do. I believe Christ is bringing us back to our basics. Somebody else got a comment? Yes. When you were reading this passage, the thing that really stuck out to me is, you know, these four men carrying this man, you know they weren't doing that unseen. You know, there were people packed out everywhere. So you know people are, what in the world are you doing? Why are you up on the roof? What? What are you doing taking that roof off? You know, so you know that they were coming. Exactly. So you know they were coming against man's word. So whenever you're trying to break through what's here on earth, trying to get to your miracle, you know man's going to be right there. What are you doing? Why are you stopping watching those movies? They're just movies. They're just entertainment. That, those, that's just music. Why aren't you coming to do this? You know you don't have to drink either. You know, you know you're going to be hearing those words. And that's, that just stuck out to me more. It's like you know that. Yeah. Exactly. Right. They were working up a sweat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, but I want to tell you something. You know that that just shows me. That just shows me the. F and I'm like Christ. Can you see the faith? Can you not see that? Every sling of that that pick, every every lick of that uh, sledgehammer. One was sitting over here. Let me have. Here, let me take it for a lick. I'll I'll hit it a few licks. He'd go. Here, let me take it a lick. They was working together. Amen. <laughs> but they broke through. My wife said, uh, God spoke to her the other day. She was, uh, she was taking a bath, and she said, uh, God put an earworm in her. You know what an earworm is, a song that you just keep hearing over and over. And this, 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 you never heard of that? It's a song you get on your mind, you don't know where it comes from. And she said, I'm not even crazy about the song, but she said, I just kept hearing it over and over. This is my breakthrough. This is my breakthrough. And let me tell you something. These folks broke through. Amen. They broke through. Yes, brother. Hang on just a minute. Let me get you mic. The thing about it, they planned this. They saw a need as soon as they heard Jesus was there and they loved that friend enough to want him to be whole. So they were willing to pay the price for somebody else. And sad to say, sometimes the church is not willing to pay the price for other folks. Well, that cost us too much. They're not my kind of people or whatever. I mean, I've heard every one of, you know, all kinds of stories about why well, we can't do this. Those men didn't accept I, we can't. Amen. They wanted him Healed. Amen. 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 Good, 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 good. Yes. So I agree. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't convenient for them. Heck no, it couldn't. Be. I mean, I'm sure they might have had jobs to go to or whatever. See, we always use, that's the excuse we use for not lifting somebody else up. Right. I mean, or how hard it was. We, we would have given up. How many of us really, we think about that in a crisis situation. We carried the man there. There were crowd was there. We can't get in there. We said, sorry, sorry, we can't carry you all the way in. But the thing about it is we're not going to get our breakthrough if we don't carry people all the way through. I mean, we didn't give up praying for you ever. Yeah, but you got your breakthrough, right? I mean, and, and that's the thing about it is we, we live in a hurry up, quick, you know, I'm busy. This is not convenient for me. I've done enough. I've prayed all I'm going to pray, and they're done. They, that's not what... They did. 
That's right. That's not what they did. They're like, I'm not, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up till we get to Jesus. And if we get that in our heart, right? If we can get that in our heart, and it is the blood of Jesus. I believe we're totally healed by the blood of Jesus. It's Jesus' blood, 100%, nothing else. But we need the breakthrough, and we need the breakthrough now. And, you know, we need a church that says, I'm not going to give up. It doesn't matter how hard it is, whether it's convenient. Uh, when you're praying for somebody else, when you're riding down the road, when you go to bed, when you get up, you think about us. If you see something on Facebook, claim it for us. Pray for us. We need our breakthrough. And we need our brothers and sisters in Christ. Y'all, I've got people all over the United States praying for him right now because of work, my work family. And, you know, we give up. We quit. We get almost there. We got all the way there. They got all the way there, and they could have just said, I'm done. We made it here. There's too many people. We can't get in the house. But we they tried. broke through the crowd. We, we they tried. had to fight the crowd to get to the top, just like you said. They had to fight. Then they had to set him down, and they had to pick up their axes or picks and go to work. But we don't, we don't want to do that. We just want to say, be hungry, be fed, be clothed. I mean, with anything, that goes with anything, you know, with Feeding the poor people. You know, that family that we reached out to at Christmas, they're probably still in need, right? But we, we, we took the effort. I mean, it did. It took a lot of effort on your part. It took a lot of effort on the church's part. But we wanted to make sure they had something. We didn't quit. What if Billy had said, this is what we're going to do? And we'd have brought three gifts up there and said, well, Billy, this is all we could do. We had to buy for our own family. And that took me too long to wrap these presents. We live in a self-centered. This was, that was a very selfless act that those people did. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I was just going to say that, that roof and all you're talking about, the, the mud. But see, there had to be beams in that yeah. thing. Yeah. They, had to, they had to tear apart some beams somewhere along the line, cut one or two through, because that mud just going to hold itself up. It's, it, it had to be braced up and then packed in. and probably had small trees small, in there. Like small beams, beams yeah, and, and probably a couple layers of them, you know, crisscross. But it wasn't no easy feat to get through there. I mean... You think about chopping through mud. It had but, to be strong enough that people could get up there and walk around on it. Well, yeah. And, you know, and lay out there in the, in the several people. Several people. Spies. You remember the spies when they came? You know the story of Joshua and uh, when the spies went in? Uh, that's, that's where she hid them. She hid them on the roof in, in, under some corn, you know. And uh, they were hid back there. So. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got an old one. <laughs> Oh, baby, you're going to get whipped. Oh, did she? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Anybody? Yes. Yes, Billy. You know, I, I think this really should have to be looked at it from a church standpoint. I mean, whose miracle was it? Whose miracle? Yeah. You know, was it the guy who got healed? No. It's like he saw their faith. Right. All of them together. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You, you know, that, that's, yeah. That, I mean, that, it was, if you ever care for somebody and you've seen them, Hurting is that's that's way worse than you hurting. Yeah. I mean, that is way worse than you hurting. You know, so that's one thing I always said. I, would, I could, that was worst things about when I went through is looking at my family, looking yeah. at me. Yeah. You know, seeing what see the hurt in them. Yeah. Yeah. That was that got them got that guy's miracle. So this is you know James talking about faith without works. Yeah. When he's when he's when he's talking to his church, and that's what Jesus is, the example here is. is, is like I said, face and action. It's a call. You know, uh, I think sometimes I always say when you get put on your heart to pray for somebody, a lot of times it's not pray God do something. It's pray God, what do you want me to do? And uh, that, I said, the, the heart of these guys, and there's a, a, we used to, used to say when I was a kid, when we go to church, one of the guys I always say that the, the human heart is so big it can only be filled by God. So they was consumed with this, this the pain of their friend. So I said it had to be seen. This is not a, a quick. This is maybe hours up there chipping and chiseling and moving rock. We serve we serve an almighty, powerful God. And one of the greatest ways for revival to come is when, when somebody saves somebody. When you start seeing people get saved, when you start seeing people get delivered, guess what? That stuff's contagious. That stuff is contagious. I'm going to tell you all a little story about 
how God works and what a powerful God we have. The little church, I mentioned it a few months ago, it was uh, out by the airport uh, in, in Huntsville. It was, <laughs> boy, you, are you talking about, <laughs> whoo, you, you'd be up there preaching and all of a sudden the airplane would come in to land, you'd have to you have to stop. I mean, it'd have to go completely over and, and fly completely over, and then, and then finally, then you could take up preaching again. It was something else, man. Woo! Well, the little church had 12 people, and they called my brother to come be the pastor. Had 11 women and one man. <laughs> Growing church. Really good opportunities here. Good career opportunity for my brother. <laughs> so he went down to that little church, and things began to happen. People began to get saved. But he really couldn't get that breakthrough that he wanted. You know, he just wanted to see God really, really work. And he kept praying. And he would go up there at night in the dark and bow at the altar and go down there with nobody but him in that little church. And he'd lay there in that dark and pray to God. He said one night he was there. He was praying to the Lord praying for the church and he said all of a sudden he realized my God I'm in the, I'm in the presence of evil and he said man he said I don't scare I'm not afraid of the dark he said but all of a sudden I realized he said I was in the presence of a satanic power that had gripped that church and he said trembling, scared to death, he said, I stood up and said, in Jesus' name, I rebuke thee. In Jesus' name, I'm telling you, get out of this church. In Jesus' name. The back door blew off the church. That was Saturday night. Sunday, we had 13 people get saved. Man, the power of God, the power of God with a simple gospel. You know why that door blew open? Because God said, I see your faith. That's what I'm looking for. Thirteen people got saved the next Sunday. My brother baptized 100 people in one year. It was 100 what? 100, added 100. Yeah. Yeah, well, we made, the, we made the newspapers. That's how big it was. Made the newspapers. That's the power of God. Oh, Lord, let it fall here at Freedom. Let it fall on Athens. God, let it start with me. Let it start tonight. Amen? Amen. Anybody else got any, uh, any, any comments or anything? Isn't God good? Isn't that a wonderful story in the Bible? And so, guys, let me tell you all something. Let me, let, me just, let, me just, let me just tell you a little something. You know, I had to go see a, a, a lung doctor today, okay? And so the lung doctor, he pulls up all his little charts, and he's showing you where everything is and what all you got wrong with you. And, you know, <clears throat> you ain't going to make it out of the office before you drop, drop over dead. I mean, they scare, hey, they scare the heck out of you, you know? But they just being doctors. They just do what doctors do, you know? And... And then I've got to go tomorrow. I've got to fast all night tonight, and I've got to go, and I've got to have a PET scan, and then I've got to have an MRI, and then I have to see another doctor, and then I'm going to have to go back. And, and I, Listen, uh, if y'all don't, don't mind, would y'all mind carrying me for just a little while? I, I really would appreciate it. It's not that I, it's, it's not that I uh, you know, I'd do it on my own if I could, but if y'all don't mind, I sure would appreciate if y'all help me get up to that roof. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. Not only am I going to be blessed, but this church is going to be blessed too. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the, the love that we feel at freedom. And most of all, tonight, God, we sit and we praise that holy name of Jesus and that finished work of the cross. God, we glorify you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, look down upon us tonight. Lord, look upon us and say, I see their faith. I see their faith. 
In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, guys, y'all be...